Hi folks, I'm Dubok and welcome to the Artificer's Guild, the home of all things Artifact. Today, I'm going to do pretty much what it says on the tin. We have 100 packs, as you can see on the user interface here, and we're going to open them. But, I'm going to make it a little, little bit more interesting than that. We're going to play a game of Artifact Bingo while I do it. So, what I've got here is three different lines, cards that are good, cards that I want, and cards that are bad. For the good and want columns, we have commons for each of them, two uncommons for each of them, and two rares for each of them. And then the bad line are all rares. We're going to see which line we can fill up first, and maybe even get a full house of good, wanted, and bad cards. So, without further ado, because this is going to take a little while, so you're going to have to bear with me, let's get into the, uh, the card pack opening. I First of all, I absolutely love this animation that we're going to see now. I might end up playing it a couple of times while we go through, but I'm not going to do it for every single pack, because we will literally be here for hours. Okay, so before I open them, what cards are we looking for? So, the good common card I want is Thunderhide. The uncommons are Mists of Avernus and Legion Commander. The rares are Time of Triumph and Drow Ranger. The cards that I want for the commons is Magnus. The uncommons are Clazarine Hourglass and Legion Standard Bearer, which might seem like a strange one, but Legion Standard Bearer was the card that Valve let me reveal. So, it's got a special pl place in my heart, and if I don't have it in Artifact, if I don't have three copies of it in Artifact, I feel like I've done them a misservice, so I'm definitely going to be hunting those down. And for the rare cards that I want, I want Pugna and Bolt of Damocles. Pugna because I just love his mechanic, I really think Nether Ward is just a fun way to mind game the enemy, and Bolt of Damocles to just simply style on people. And then our bad rare cards, we have Meepo. Any of the Path cards, so that's Path of the Wise, Path of the Bold, Path of the Cunning. Path of the Dream is actually kind of okay, but I lumped it in there with the rest of them. Watchtower, which during the Season of Reveals I claimed as the worst card in Artifact. Fog of War, which is just abysmal. And Keenfolk Golem, because I felt bad for only having blue cards. So, without further ado, let's take a look. Typically, this top left card will be our hero, so, and the first card you hover over does its voice line, so I'm going to try and aim for the hero in every single one. I care little for the Zeus straight off the bat, hallelujah. No one of the, the best Lord heroes in the game, quite easily. The Thunder God's Wrath, fantastic. And the plight of the Maybe the a little bit overrated. So, we typically have commons in this corner, although this was an uncommon obliterating orb, nice. And then you've got commons along the top, three uncommons along the bottom, and then your rare in this bottom corner. So I'm going to try and do commons first, and then go no through. You know what, I'm not going to hover over the heroes first every time, I'm going to try and avoid it, because their voice lines are long. <laughs> and Zeus is trying to talk over me there. So let's go through our commons. Remember, we're looking for Thunderhide, Magnus, and... Oh, not Meepo, because Meepo's a rare. Either way, Conscript is great, Foresight's great. You get both of these in the starter decks, but you only get two of, so having three of is perfectly fine. Jasper Daggers might be good in a future meta, but not just now. I love Steel Strength. Steel Strength is a great card. Rend Armor, not necessarily the best, but all in all this is looking good already. Let's have a look at our rare. Hallelujah, it's a good one. Steam Cannon. Fantastic. Steam Cannon is definitely one of the best ways to end a game in black. Uh, black decks typically go rush face pretty quick. They build up gold, or you can play them as a two of and include tech cards like Steam Cannon. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna open I'm just gonna play the animation. Just one more time. Just one more time. Oh. Alright, our hero is missing, so I'm just going to play the item. So, here's our rare. I wonder if we've got a rare hero in our second pack. So, looking through our commons. Another best late than never. Better late than never is a good. Uh, New Orders is actually in my all commons deck. The one I recommend you play. Uh, it's a green-red deck. And there's three new orders in there, so I'm glad to have that. Assassin's Apprentice is a fantastic card. This is one of those things that you just chuck into a black deck, you can put it down early, and because you can choose where it targets, you can really uh, punish enemy heroes. Stonefall Elite and Steel Strength. Oh my god, this pack is amazing. These are both fantastic cards. Stonefall Elite is an auto-include. And Satan Magician's pretty darn good as well. If I don't end up getting... <gasps> this means we've got a rare hero, guys. So long as it's not Meepo. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, Satan Magician, if you don't have an Agonim Sanctum, you can just include her instead. So what's our rare hero? Rare, rare hero in the second pack. 
Kana. Hallelujah. Kana is a fantastic blue hero. She's with 12 health, easily one of the best casters. And Prey on the Weak is a just brilliant card. I absolutely love Kana. I've played her in a bunch of decks and we're going to be seeing a lot more of Kana on the channel, it seems. What do we have next? Oh, it plays the animation every single time. Never mind, I'm just going to do that every time then. Alright, so we've got two... When you see those clinks, those are upgrades. So these otherwise would have been uh, commons, I guess. But now they're uncommons. We'll find out. Ice rack is not a clever name. So, Dimensional Portal, also good. Cold. And those that don't dress for the Another weather, better late than never. We've got three of now. <laughs> so those are technically all of our commons. Hipfire is fantastic, but you get two of those with the starter decks. Same with Dimensional Portal. Oh, we got a legend, uh, legendary. What is this? Hearthstone? Get out of here. We got a rare upgrade and another. We got three rares in our third pack. So we got Kana last time, and one of these is a hero. We got two rare heroes in packs two and three. This is ridiculous. All right, let's open our normal rare first. Thunderhide Alpha. Nice beefy boy. Didn't quite make the list, but uh, definitely up there as one of the best. Path of the Cunning. Yes, let's take that off the list. So we got one of our path cards. I, I don't know why I sound happy about that. That's in the bad column. But still, ticked off the list. And this is going to be our hero. So what rare hero do we have next? Earthshaker. My favourite Dota 2 hero. Unfortunately, he's not too good in Artifact at the moment. But I can see him getting a bit better with some meta changes. Or maybe even a buff to Earthshaker himself. So I'm definitely worth having and I've got to make him work. I absolutely adore him in Dota. Got to get that $6 million Echo Slam in Artifact. Alright, here we go. Now we're back to normal cards. Isn't willing to share the mist of so, Scarath Bane's our hero, and definitely one of the better it. common heroes. Fantastic in control decks. Great support with his uh, with his Mystic Flare. I'm uh, not sorry, his Mystic Flare. Great support with his Concussive Shot, and his Mystic Flare just destroys his enemies. So, let's go through our commons here. Another Foresight. And there's our Thunderhide pack, so we can tick him off the list. Thank God for that. Excellent closer for green decks. Definitely well worth using. A Glody Catapult I haven't seen too much use of, but Defensive Bloom can be good in some decks, and Restoration Effort, not the best, but I've got my Thunderhide back, I'm happy here. And for our rare, Glyph Confusion. Not necessarily one of the best ones, but it can work in certain decks. Uh, lock decks, I think, pick this up, so uh, we might try and meme with Lock Deck later on. On to the next one. I'm so glad that plays every time. Oh, we've got an upgrade to a common there. Best way to survive so... Lycan is our hero. Oh, so Lycan is one of the starter heroes. So unfortunately, this is our first starter hero duplicate. He's probably not going to have too much of a sell value. But to be honest, they're going to probably change the starter packs eventually. Or I'd imagine maybe in some future distant time, Artifact becomes free to play, but you don't get starter decks and stuff like that. Who knows? But eventually he might go up in price. And he's not going to sell for anything at all at the moment. So just hold on to him. Maybe one day he'll be worth something. So that's our uncommon, isn't it? So on to the uncommons now. Armor Rebellion's actually really nice. And again, new orders. Enough Magic. I freaking love this card. Enough Magic is one of those cards where you've got it in your hand, you prepare sort of lethal on the board, like earlier on, and then you pass into it knowing you've got enough magic. The enemy feels perfectly safe, and uh, then you just drop enough magic, end the action phase, and destroy them. I've won a fair few games with that. Golden Ticket's always nice. It's good to chuck into a deck. A Mex Arena and Forward Charge, both pretty good value cards. And our rare is a Conflag. Yes, this very, very nearly made my list. I was going to put Conflag or Annihilation instead of Bolt of Damocles. But I'm just incredibly happy to have a Conflag. This un unlocks the ability for me to make some uh, some control decks. Which I'm not very good at, but <laughs> it's uh, certainly a good deck archetype. For the warrior on We've got a rare the item here. So there were a couple of good rare items, name, namely Horn of the Alpha, which probably should be on our list. Ursa is our hero here. I like Ursa. He's, uh, his, passive, his passive and Viper's passive are two of my favourites. Uh, I love reducing the enemy's base stats on their heroes and uh, making them really have to try and fight tooth and nail for the end game. Otherwise, Gank, fantastic. Another Stonehall Elite, yes. And a Stars Align. Okay, so one thing we need to look out for in this deck, in this uh, pack opening rather, is Stars Align and Salamene's Favor, because I already have an incarnation of Salamene, incarnation of Salamene, which, if you don't know, there's that awesome combo deck 
where you can play Stars Align turn one, and you can put your Salamene's Favor in the second or third lane, and then ramp up, get to Incarnation of Salamene in like the second round, and then you can just play unlimited cards. It's absolutely fantastic. So happy to see these because I've already got the uh, the Incarnation. And a Vesture of the Tyrant, yes. Okay, this item is freaking fantastic. Equipped hero has plus three armor, rapid deployment, but most importantly, basically most importantly, your tower has three armor. That means creeps don't do any damage, blue heroes basically don't do any damage. This, this item can save you from the brink. Absolutely love it. We've been pretty darn lucky with this, guys. I opened the first ten packs you get with the game, and I got basically nothing. It was all rubbish. <laughs> So it's about time that I got something good here. Phantom Assassin as well. These common heroes we're getting are just knocking it out of the park. Say to Duelist, I freaking love. He's great. Disciple of Nevermore. Very nearly made the list. It was him or Thunderhide was going to be my common slot for uh, for good cards. Oh no, sorry, for want cards. It was him or Magnus. Friendly Fire is nice. You don't see it played too much, but it's if you've got a control deck and you don't quite have the numbers to make up, for like Annihilation or something, you can put a Friendly Fire in. Blink Dagger is just freaking amazing, so I'm so glad I got one of those. And our item... Vesture of the Tyrant or Horn the Alpha? Bristol Emblem. Okay, probably one of the worst rare items, but the rest of this make, makes up for it, so uh, I'm perfectly happy with that. On to the next pack. I can see that animation wearing on me eventually. Okay. Another Ursa. So we can sell him. He's not one of the... Uh, the hearts of the virtuous. The starter deck one, so we can definitely sell him. Payday is nice. Slay is very nice. I love having slays. Thunderstorm is fantastic. Compel is fantastic. We're getting some pretty epic blue cards, guys. And a red Miss Pillager as well. I love playing red. Red and green are probably my favourite colours to play. Uh, so I'll be incredibly happy if I get some really good cards for them. And red Miss Pillager, definitely up there. Not only for red, but also for blue control decks, because you can just control the enemy and let your red mist pillagers go nuts. So uh, I'm glad to see we're getting a lot of control alongside this red mist. And Cheating Death, one of the best rare green cards out there. Again, almost made my list, really nice card. I just love to to sit there and when it, does, when it doesn't trigger, I don't care, whatever. But when it does trigger, you know you're getting in your enemy's heads. They're just flipping and effing about RNG and not focusing on the game. Oh, another potentially rare hero, but probably an uncommon. Double Ring of Tarrasque, nice. Disciple of Nevermore again. Another Thunderhide, so two of now, so we can really go for those late game Thunderhides. Gank, which is brilliant. And yes, Legion Commander. Legion Commander ticked off our list. The good column is, uh, the good row, sorry, is starting to win. Impressive. So Legion Commander is brilliant. Her signature card, Duel, is just two mana and lets you target out enemy heroes using some of your own. And her stat line is pretty good. And a Mist of Avernus. Oh my god, in one pack we ticked off both of our uncommons from the same row. Brilliant. Mist of Avernus is just... If you're playing a wide, which I do quite a like, I like to play wide, but it's just very punishable. Uh, you need, 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 need Mr. of Venice. And Ogre Corpse Tosser. One for the memes. I'm perfectly happy to have him. I'll uh, see if I can work him into my Karna deck. I haven't been tracking how many packs we've gone through yet, so uh, we'll find out, I, uh, I guess. Necrophos. I do like Necrophos. I want to try and make Heartstopper all work. It's going to be very difficult. Lightning Strike's really nice. A Glody Vandal, probably the epitome of value. This card is just worth so much. And a Rebus Pillager again. Nice upgrade there. Double Lightning Strikes, nice. All we need now is, oh, we get Ogre Magi with the game. So, Lightning Strike with an Ogre Magi, perfect. Okay, so this this deck's been, uh, this pack roller has been, it's been mediocre. What can we have now? Ravenous Mass, yes. So, if you haven't yet, go back and watch my Artifact Survival Guide video, and I go over some of the cards that are not necessarily going to be expensive at the moment, but might well be in future. And Ravenous Mass, I know some of the Constructed guys think this card is insane. Like, just it just breaks the game on a new level. 
So with a bit of a meta shift, or maybe in another expansion or so, this card might be worth a hell of a lot of money, so uh, I'm holding on to this one. I'll play with it, and then maybe sell it in future. Another not common hero. Nice to see. Nice to see. Two of the worst items in the game. Fantastic. Oh, we're looking bad here, so that's a fourth of. This is a bad green card. Tower Barrage is good. Dimensional Portal, fourth of. Disciple and Evermore, third of. Okay, I'm happy now. Disciple. Sister of the Veil is kind of good. It was an upgrade card, though, so... And Prelex. Sweet, so we've got both Prelex and Karna. We can go full out on the uh, RP of the lore. Probably worse than her daughter. If you don't know, Prelex is Karna's mother. She's the Priestess of the Radiant, and Karna converts to the Dire, and she's now the Priestess of the Dire. <laughs> in fact, we can see her next to her in Compel. That's uh, nicely done there. Lost in Time is just a really nice lock card to have. Probably the best lock card you can run. Another Ravenous Mass. Okay. We are we are definitely playing a Ravenous Mass deck. Got to uh, hit up my boy AJ and ask him what the best list for a Ravenous ma Mass deck is. Rubik claims to be Aghanim's son. I'm not sure I Sven. It, I, certainly wouldn't say I think it was it Crypt place. that got seven Svens? Poor bugger. Uh, we've just got one for now. Or two, I guess, with the uh, base. What else have we got here? Duke's pretty nice. Again, Assassin's Apprentice is strong. Double shields. They're not bad. Uh, none of these uncommons are very good, but we've got a decent set of commons. This is probably the worst pack we've had so far. Let's see if our rare can redeem it. Another Thunderhide Alpha. Okay. That's pretty good. He's not as good as Thunderhide pack because siege damage is just so easy to confirm. But I'm happy with Thunderhide Alpha. That was a decent pack. I don't think I've had a single cut pack that I would call bad yet. And again, another not... Uh, common hero. I don't know whether it's just my luck or whether it's just nicely weighted to get good heroes. A Glody Vandal, Selfish Cleric, Collateral Damage, these are all good cards. Cunning Plan is good value. Assassin's Apprentice, I think there might be a fourth of now or at least a third. Okay. Okay. Artifact, we've got to have some words. I was excited about this uncommon hero. What do you give me Ricks for? Jokes aside, Rick's probably trash hero at the moment, you probably don't want to be playing him. But in the future, maybe his passive, which lets him have Relentless Rebel, comes back every single turn. Uh, sorry, Rapid Deployment, his passive is called Relentless Rebel. Maybe that in a future expansion becomes just ridiculously OP. So one to hold on to anyway, unless it's already expensive and then I'll sell it. Tyler Estate Sensor is a very good card, mostly in draft, but you can also find space for it in uh, black sort of two of techs. And on to our rare. Curse of Atrophy, probably one of the worst off rares, but I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna fault them for it. On to the next pack. I wonder, you see those little like bits of words as it explodes. I wonder if they're actually part of the uh, the cards Many themselves. Trent Protector, one of my common heroes in the common only deck. So glad to have him. That'll save me going after him. That's like our fifth shield of the Basilius, guys. We're gonna be extra protected in the same we can probably sponsor an entire freaking uh, phalanx formation not phalanx sorry what is it testudo that's the one with the shields oh i was an archaeologist i was an archaeologist i should know this kind of stuff uh rest of it pretty average trebuchets is nice poise the strike pretty terrible uh collateral damage though i like collateral damage We've got two claymores now spot weakness is a brilliant card any any of these three mana red cards that say draw a card brilliant why not? They're just fantastic. And a second Stars Align. Get in there. We are making that Incarnation combo deck. What is our rare? Wrath of Gold. Not terrible. Not fantastic either. A little bit meme -y, But hey, who doesn't like having meme decks? So long as it's not bad, I'm happy with good cards, amazing cards, and meme cards, basically. Oh, another upgrade. So that's a second Legendary. Uh, leg I've got to stop saying Legendary. It's because they're flashing gold. Rare. That's a second Rare. The Siege Stone Hall. Bloodseeker. Not one of the best the heroes so far in Artifact, but you can find space for him. It's mainly Blood Rage. It's just not as good as the others. How? How are we getting so many shields of Basilius? Would you shut up, Aglody Vandal? Yes, I know you like Sola Khan. Can I speak now? No. Red Mist marches. And may the gods have mercy on whoever stands in our way. You quite done? Yes, okay. 
Remind me to hover over an item first next. Their voice lines are a lot shorter. Incidentally, all of these voice lines, you can go into the deck collection after and play just from start to finish. You can read them. It's, uh, it's a really nice way of doing things. And you can do it for the ones you don't own. You don't need to own the card. Salamini's favor, like I said, we need this one for our incarnation of Salamini deck. Compel, that's our second or third. They're really good cards. And our second th Thunderstorm. We've got a good blue deck on the horizon here, guys. So what about rares? Two, plural. Divine Purpose, pretty decent. Um... I think it's underrated at the moment. Most people think it's bad, but at the same time, 7 mana, there's a lot of other good stuff out there for green. And another Thunder Hide Alpha, so that's a 3 off now. Any more of those that we get, we can just chuck them straight on the market. And, I mean, it is a rare at the end of the day, so that's going to be worth something. And you are going to want to have excess cards that you can sell. Oh, we're getting an upgraded hero. Is not a clever name. It's cold there. Arm the Rebellion, great. Love it. Arcan Assault is also fantastic. We've got a lot of these out. Third Stone Hall Elite. Alright guys, we've got our three of. And these will actually be worth something. In my survival guide I said cards that will be worth a decent chunk at the beginning include Stone Hall Elite. So if we get another one of these, we are in the money. And Viper, yes. I love Viper. I don't care if people think he's bad. I actually like playing Viper. Viper Strike isn't as bad as you think. It deals two piercing damage to the enemy before the action phase, before every action phase until it dies, which for three mana might seem just rubbish, but you just use it for upkeep kills. And then Viper himself, he's a 410, and any time an enemy does damage to him, their attack is reduced by one. Reducing the enemy's attack permanently, even if it's just by one, against enemy heroes is actually really, really nice. You can do some funky stuff like play this with Grand Melee to force the enemy to cleave, and you can reduce the attack of three enemy heroes at the same time without them being able to stop you at all. I love it. And another Stars Line. So those are our three Stars Lines. Again, any more of those we can sell. Plazarim Hourglass. That was on my list of once. This is probably my favourite item in the game. A Crooked Hero plus four health, and whenever an opponent draws a card, give it plus one lock. It just... When it gets to that end part of the game and both sides are trying to draw that one final card they need to win, it just puts a complete stop in it. Your enemy is now one full turn of draws behind you. And it's just, I love it, it's brilliant. Our rare, the Oath. The Oath is pretty nice. It's very difficult to pull off in the right places, but you can surprise enemies with it quite well. And what do we have? Oh, two upgrades, including a second legendary. We're getting loads of double legendaries. Red Mist Maul and Demagicking Maul. So our two items are actually really good here. Darkseer, he's pretty decent. Surge is probably his only redeeming factor, being able to move heroes around. I'm sure there'll be some decks out there that are good for him. Upgrade, Legion Standard Bearer. Tick that off the list. Would you... This is Axis Squire talking, right? I forget its name. As the bleak day. Maybe I should stop hovering items. <laughs> I think this is probably the longest voice line attached to an item possible. I'm happy I brought this though. And this. These are both really good. Well, this is definitely really good. Demagic him all. Alright, he stopped. On to our rares. Rooted. This is one hell of a meme. But, like I said, I enjoy memes. And Keenfolk Golem. We can take that off our bad list. <laughs> so the reason why this is on my bad list like it's not one of the absolute it's not it's not in the bottom five rares i think there are probably worse rares than this but it's just funny just play effect discard your hand who the hell is going to do it for a 13 13 disclaimer i won a game of this once but never again all right Please don't be a Red Miss Maul. Stonehall Cloak. This is also going to be long, they right? Conquer, they occupy, they move on. Is it actually Jalixia talking? So Jalixia wrote all of the passages for the items, if you look in the deck builder. Uh, so Jalixia is this card fawn who is the way that Artifact is being brought into the Dota world, I guess. I guess she's like, I don't know, some sort of artificer, maybe? Wing wing. Um... So maybe that's her voice. I haven't heard her voice specifically yet. Magnus is our hero. Ticked off the list. 
what a beast he is. 419, no passive, but just excellent at tanking, has him power, and is part of our commons only deck list. Happy to see him there. Slay, fantastic card. Remess Blessing, fantastic card. Hero's Cape, not the uh, uncommon item I wanted to see, really. And one for me is a good Redmiss Pillager again. So that's our three of. Any more, we sell them. And our rare... Heroic Resolve. This nearly made my bad list. In fact, this is probably worse than King Vote Golem, just not as funny. Uh, modify a red hero with after you play a non-item card, costing two or less, modify with plus two health. It's... It encourages you to fly through your hand, and you need a mono red deck to do it, and mono red doesn't have much card draw, outside of uh, the three mana ones that just let you draw one. Which is okay, but they don't trigger this. If they triggered this, that would be fine. Anyway, besides the point. The reason why this isn't in my bottom five rares is because you can actually play this one and the other one, Rising Anger, together in a deck. It's actually one of the event decks, and it can do alright, so it's one of these like full archetype cards. That's one thing... Back in my, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! a long time ago, and I really, really enjoyed playing like a full archetype, like only playing cards that were like Battery Men, or I think it was one of them, and uh, Amazon S's was another one. Just playing like a really, really small group of cards that synergize well with one another. Uh, I like seeing that sort of thematic play. So maybe I'll have a go with that in uh, in Artifact. Move me on. Oh, we got an upgrade. That's an uncommon now. Team Felt Muskets. And Venomancer. So our uh, blue sort of creep spamming deck is starting to look good with Kana, Venomancer, and Prelex. Definitely a very weak in terms of his stats. But if you can protect him, he can basically win you the game. Second Rebel Instigator, I believe. Second Hero's Cape. Why you do this to me, Valve? <laughs> Friendly Fire again. A nice card. And another Satan Magician. On to our rare. Rising Anger, the counterpart of what we were just talking about. Well, there we go. We're definitely playing that archetype now. On we go. <laughs> Enough of that. Ice rack is not Ever since I said rain. we're getting crazy luck with uncommon and rare heroes, we haven't been getting any. Second Bloodseeker, one to sell. I don't think Bloodseeker's going to sell that well, but maybe I'll hold on to it then. Maybe... Any of these common heroes that just won't sell well, I'll hold on to. Sucker Bunch is nice for that red only deck, by the way. Second Obliterating Orb, another Rebel Instigator, and a Temple of War. Temple of War, if you're confused, all equipped heroes means both you and your opponent. So anything that doesn't specify ally, you probably want to avoid. And there's a second Keenfolk Golem. Fantastic. I've got two rares to sell. <laughs> no, I'll probably keep one of them, just for the meme. Um, but then, yeah, the other one is is going to uh, the scrap graveyard not a day goes by where its soldiers aren't training to another phantom assassin she's going to be worth at least something so that's not the end of the world rebel decoy fantastic card again arm the rebellion brilliant in wide decks and a glow vandal and remember all of these commons man this is actually every single common here these are all really high tier commons another stars lines that's one we can sell oh i did both at the same time keenfolk turret that was on my list of top cards to sell early and enough magic like I said before I thoroughly enjoy this card I happily run three of eh, I'll happily run two of and caught unprepared is a pretty funny item uh, item pretty funny card that requires the enemy to drop an item onto a hero if you're being able to like stop an enemy or beat them or if especially if you don't see an item because remember in the hand when you see the back of the enemy's hand items will be a different color so if you see they don't have an item Dropping this on an enemy hero is effectively just definitely stunning them for that round, and maybe another one as well. It can also make, force them to put items where they don't want to. So say the enemy hero has, I don't know how this would happen, but say they've got a Vesture of the Tyrant, a Horn of the Alpha, and an Apotheosis Blade on one hero. If you drop this on them, they're stunned until they replace one of those items. But you've probably lost to that point already. Oh, another upgrade. Nice. There's a second Sven. Are we going to get seven? That's two. So that was our upgrade. Smash the defenses. I like this card. Smash is just an all-round fantastic card. Having a condemn, having an improvement condemn is just, you can never have enough of it. There's another red miss, so that one's going to the chop. Rebel Instigator, I think. These cards work quite similarly, and uh, we've got loads of the both of them now. And Treston Standards. Eh, not one of the best rares, but not one of the worst. 
Maybe you'll see play in that uh, Rising Anger red deck. The mono red. You have to be really careful when you Double barb mail. Put this thing Another Venomancer. Nice, nice to sell, I guess. We've definitely seen a lot of Dukes and Lightning Strikes. I feel like there are some commons that are just more than common. <laughs> Spot Weakness. Three mana red draw card. Love it. Pickoffs are always good. Troll Seathe is good. This is like a fourth and one for me as well. I swear there are some cards that we're just getting over and over. It's not terrible because like, like I said, this is a TCG. I can sell these cards. Uh, when selling is open. And another Glyph of Confusion. So maybe we are looking at a lock deck. We got the uh, Lost in Time as well, which is one of the best lock cards. The Bronze Legion's hallmark is discipline. Not a day and where another Ursa. To be the best. Again, like I said, I like Ursa, but I don't have need for two of them. Maybe I'll hold on to him until uh, one of my decks gets uh, so popular that... Ooh, Keen Boat Turret. So popular that everyone else tries to pick him up, and then I can sell him. <laughs> Ravenhook. I haven't actually played this guy yet. But he was one of the first sort of cards, or at least card artworks we saw, like way, way back in like February, I want to say. So I kind of want to see him work, but for six mana, he's just a bit expensive. Like if you're spending six mana to take an item off the enemy for a 3-6, and then to have a 3-6 unit on the board, you're probably behind already, if that's a good thing. It has to be the hero blocking it, so he's probably just going to die in one hit. The bull snake is a fitting symbol for Stonehall. We've got plenty they of these Stonehall cloaks, they occupy, they which is on. good. By in time, there's another lock one, so we can get that lock deck going. A second Necrofo, so many lightning strikes. I'm glad we're getting some Glody Vandals, though. Phase Boots, brilliant item. Burning Oil is actually quite nice. I quite like this, especially in that uh, Rising Anger mono red deck. So it looks like we're definitely going for this mono red deck at some point. And Unearth Secrets. This is definitely one of the best rares in the game. In terms of pure value, this might well be the best rare in the game. But it didn't make my list because of Time of Triumph and Drow. And even Axe didn't make it because of the other two. So, uh, yeah. Unearth Secrets. So happy to have this. You want three of. In any, basically any green deck, you want three of these. So, one down. <laughs> two more to go. Oh. Is that an upgrade on Hero? Saul Khan. I won't even pretend that it's on Now I've got to sit here and listen to her. I've led the Red Mist from town to town, taking whatever it is we want. Yes. And what we want you take what you want. Survive. You don't want to survive. You're a meanie. Yes. We're, we're Legion supporters here, if you didn't know. Uh, if you join our Discord, we've uh, just upgraded it to thematically follow the uh, the Bronze Legion. So, we are we're Legionnaires at heart. I am the saviour of your glory. You can try and save the Aglody all you want, love. I'm going to burn it down again. Oh, Cursator upgrade as well. Uh, absolutely. Well, not a terrible card. Basically, this is a 5 cost killer hero with 6 health. Because if you use it any other way, then it's just going to start sporting stuff for your enemy. Uh, Slay again, good. On the Rebellion again, good. Intimidation is good. A second class Ream Hourglass. That's what I like to see. And a rare item. Are we going to get that horn? Maybe even a Apotheosis Blade? No, we're getting a Sephirim shield. That is, uh... Well, you don't really see it that often, let's put it that way. <laughs> Reduces the attack of all units, so allied ones as well. It can be good in, I guess, in like a blue control deck. But even then, later on, you want to get rid of it. The what are we looking at? Crystal Maiden. I'm glad I got one Crystal Maiden. Well, I only want one, but... I'm glad I got a Crystal Maiden. She can be good in, uh... Building certain combos. Second Mist of Avernus. So our green deck is looking pretty good. We've got another secrets, two mists, two Thunderhide packs. So yeah, we're definitely looking good for green. And our mono red catastrophe. Mercenary Exiles, fantastic card. Great value. You can pump gold into it if you don't have any good items in your packs. Oh, upgraded hero. Upgraded item. Second, uh, sorry, third Clasrim Hourglass. So that's it. We've got our Clasrim Hourglasses. Any extra we can sell and sell for a hefty profit because they're going to be uh, sought after. At least hopefully. This is a lot of black. <laughs> Defend the weak. Burning oil. Smeevil Armster. These Smeevils, the Smeevil cards, not necessarily great. Uh, this one's maybe not terrible, but there are definitely better cards out there. 
for example, Legion's data bearer does his job but better. Omni Knight. This would be really great. But I opened the 10 free packs I got with the game and Omni Knight was the only good rare hero I got. So he's going to be selling. But hey, that's an extra sell I get. Of a rare hero. And a pretty good one of that. Omni Knight is a good rare hero. Ooh, all the upgrades. The so, our commons. Ooh, Bronze Legionnaire. Nice common. Bronze Legionnaire. Nice common. Especially to have in that, again, mono red deck. Where's our hero? Lost in time. Great. We can do a lock deck. Third Thunderstorm. OD. Probably the single worst hero in the game. No. Um, he's definitely down there. He's not great at the moment. I'm wondering if there will be a deck that comes out that makes him better. Maybe in an expansion or so. We'll find out. Keenfoot Plate. I don't care for it. And another Mercenary Exile. So our red, we're really looking good on the red front for that really aggressive red deck. So I'm thinking I'll look at that. Another not common hero. I said that my luck had run out with these, but it hasn't. It's still going strong. Our third Troll Soothsayer. Our second Prelex. I think Prolex and Kana, even looking away from how good they are, are probably going to be worth selling because people are just fan all over them. Homefield Advantage. Brilliant green improvement and probably one of the cutest animations you will ever see. If you haven't seen it yet, I won't spoil it for you. Just uh, keep an eye out for it. Time of Triumph! Yes, thank you, Valve. That will pay for itself. This is the closing factor of it. You only ever need one or two of these. Time of Triumph just lets you win games. Tick that off the list. Now all we need is Drow Ranger. Funnily enough, if we get Drow Ranger, we have... We get bingo. Come on, give us that bingo. It's not going to be this time, guys. Are we getting upgraded item, though? What is it? Uh, like our seventh Claymore, sweet. Our third Ursa, not bad. At least with these non-starter heroes, we can sell them. So uh, I'm not too worried about it. Another Smeevil. Dirty Deeds. Absolute rubbish card. <laughs> no one ever has enough improvements unless you're playing against sl Sir Action Slacks. And our rare is a third Keenfolk Golem. I, I can't judge this. Like I get Time of Triumph one pack, and then I get another, another, another Keenfolk Golem the next. Bounty Hunter. Definitely a great hero. You want him... Oh, and Payday. Nice. Basically, you want him in any gold generation deck. You uh, you need Bounty Hunter. We don't need him, but he just helps so much. And the fact that you can track on turn one, it can be a bit preemptive, but... Oh, Murder Plot. I love this black card. So, yeah, it can be a bit preemptive to track on turn one, but it's all right. It's mana efficient. Another Stars Alliance. Five? No? We can sell those, though. And another gank. That might be three, maybe four. Murder plot though. Love murder plot. I have won games by just... The enemy thinks they're safe. They're like, he's eight damage from lethal and he's only got four mana. There is no way he can stop me. And then you just drop a murder plot. And they're like, ah, oh, oh dear. Uh, the oath can have a similar effect. Adding ridiculous damage of black. And Disciple of Nevermore is the other one. Black has just got these crazy swings where you think you're safe. And then just boom. They've just got ridiculous damage. So, Bloodseeker. Let's bind time. So, we can build that lock deck, probably. Plate Mail, Rendama, Glody Catapult. So, this one needs to bring this deck back. This pack back. This is a very average pack. And now it's a very meme pack. So, we've got lock for the memes. We've got Ogre Corpse Tosser, also for the memes. And Papa Samet. Moving on to our next pack. Oh, an upgrade. So that's two legendaries. Am I, am I right? Yep, two. I've got to stop saying legendaries. Someone send help. Two rares and a non-common hero somewhere. It's cold there. I think that's the that's one of the hero spots, right? That's where heroes spawn. Sucker Punch is pretty decent. Hip fire is nice. I think we've got enough hip fires now, though. Another stone hole, and both of these can be sold. And for a decent amount of cash. And Storm Spirit. Also on my list of heroes that are great to sell early on. 
because they're going to be worth a decent chunk. But I'm going to be holding on to him because I have now have Storm Spirit and Solar Khan, which are part of an excellent, excellent deck that my friend Action Jackson, if you don't know him, go check him out. He sent me this deck list, and the first game I played of it, I won in five minutes flat. Basically, it works around having Solar Khan in your first set of cards, and then you've got six different cards that let you move between lane. Ball Lightning being one of them, very integral to the deck. And another Divine Purpose. Okay, this, this is a very good pack. No Drag Ranger, but to be fair, I don't play much Drag in the beta when I had all of the cards, I still didn't play much Drag Ranger. There's another Thunder Hide, so we've got three off now. Abaddon, pretty damn strong. He'll be good in some metas and in some decks. Oh, not Remus Maul. Remus Maul is a good item. Let me just disclaimer. I like Remus Maul as an item. This voice line is too long. <laughs> Double self-sabotage for those uh, Mimi blue decks with lock. And Curse of Atrophy. Terrible. I was happy to skip past that because that voice line was uh, doing my nut in. Ooh, okay. You have to be really careful when so we've got an upgraded hero. It's not in the normal slot, which is this. Three intimidations now. That's good. So is that our hero? It is. A legendary hero. Could it be a Drow Ranger? We've already got Kimfo Turret. Very good. Will be pricey. Enough magic. Very good. I like it. Drow Ranger? Okay, Lich. Lich is actually a really strong hero. He, again, on my list of rare heroes that will cost a decent chunk of money at the beginning. He is probably the best caster for black. You want him in those sort of two of decks, especially. Uh, and Chainfrost is probably, yeah, definitely black's best AoE control. So, all in all, Lich, brilliant hero to have. I'm so glad with heroes you only need one of. I'd feel so bad if I needed two more liches. For the on but now I've just got that one. That's all I need. So we've got an uncommon hero here. I figured out the the way this pack sets up now. So this will be an uncommon hero. Boom. Oh, it's not. <laughs> I forgot, obviously. It can also be a legendary hero. So what legendary hero have we got? Dry Ranger? Bebo. Stinker! Again, on that aforementioned list of good heroes that might cost a decent chunk. Personally, I can't seem to get anything good out of Tinker. Whenever I play Tinker, it goes badly. But whenever anyone else plays Tinker, they usually do pretty well with him. So, uh, yeah, a good one to have. Maybe I'll ask someone to show me how to play Tinker. Just like in Dota, hey? I'm terrible at Tinker. What's our... Ooh, legendary item. Ooh, Klazrim Hourglass. So that's one we can sell. Another bounty hunter. He's going to be worth for a common hero, though. He's going to be worth a decent penny. I understand that a lot of my commentary on these cards have been how much they're going to be costing, but I think, I hope, maybe that that's what you guys are worried about. Personally, I I don't mind. I I will get a close to complete-ish collection where I'll, I can trade across cards if I need to get ones for specific decks. But I just want to sort of point out to you guys what you need to be looking. Oops. What, you, uh, what you're what you looking for in these decks. In these packs, rather. So, uh, yeah, I hope that's kind of the information you need. I'm also trying to shed light on what's good, but typically, what's expensive is what's good. So I hope you're getting that either way. Uh, let's go for the card first. Second con flag. Our blue deck's looking even better. Come on, good item. Come on, 25 gold. Apotheosis Blade. That's nice. Would have preferred Horn of the Alpha, but thank god it's not Natasha's card. Pothius' Blade is fantastic, and you can style the hell on your enemies with this card. Beautiful. That was one of the first big cards we saw as well, where everyone sort of just draw dropped and was like, oh my god, that card has so much text. Oh, Red Mist Mord. Looks like we've got to fly through this one. Quick, 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 quick. Aghanim Sanctum, that's our first one, that's really good. Rebel Decoy, also really good. And Fog of War, tick that off our list. Oh, so we need two more bads. Alright, goodbye Red Mismore. <laughs> Sorry if I skipped through Red Mismore packs, but... Damn, that's a long voice line. 
forges of Stonehall blacksmiths burn day and Okay, so now we've got we've got a rare hero, right? Because this is where the uncommon hero appears, and it's not a hero. Am I right? Am I wrong? Who knows? Let's find out. I'm right. So every time I hover this, I say Drow Ranger, but there are a lot of rare heroes. For example, we haven't got Axe yet either. So uh, and another Kana. Okay, one to sell. Perfectly happy with that. I might be able to get enough from selling like Kana and that bounty hunter to buy an axe or something. Like she's she's up there. She's definitely up there. <clears throat> and our next pack, another uncommon, no rare hero. That's the hero spot, right? The keen folk are a clever people, always looking for a way to use science. Oh, that was the upgrade. Things, I missed it. Even warfare. So we now got definitely got enough buying times. So our lock deck is looking pretty snazzy. Another cell instigator. So I'll do our hero last. Horn of the Alpha. Yes. Okay, now we have both of the great 25 gold items. Horn of the Alpha wasn't on my list. But it's definitely incredibly good. And the hero. Another Tinker. Okay. Tinker's, like I said, he's he's definitely up there, but he's not Karna level. So maybe I sell Karna and Tinker and buy Drow Ranger. Something like that. But, I mean, you can't, be, you can't be unhappy about a duplicate tinker. The keen folk are a clever people, always looking now the Treant, maybe I'll sell him to uh, someone more. that's trying to build my common deck. Perfectly happy to do that. Demagicking wall, you want three of these, I've got two of them now. Another good Remess Blessing, another Pillager, and a Reptile Convoy. Definitely nice to have in gold generation decks, and we now have Bounty Hunter. We now have two Bounty Hunters. Uh, and a bunch of paydays and some iron fog gold mines so we can definitely look at building a gold deck and having revtail convoy in there don't forget we've got a potheosis blade and horn of the alpha to go in that too our gold generation deck is looking fine oh upgrade some say this ring can let its bearer dark sierra naturally that's an tyler estate sensor like i said before really good in draft can find its spot so it in uh in constructed Reptile Signet Ring. Really nice to have, especially in blue decks. What could someone do with a Tarasque's heart? And another caught unprepared. Not terrible. Uh, Smash the Defenses is probably my favourite card here. Smash I just Smash is great. I want three of these and I've got two of now. Perfectly happy with that. Onwards and upwards, as they say. Some say this ring another ring of Tarasque. Live forever. Magnus. Again, can sell that to someone who's trying to build the common deck. Legendary item. I've got so many Remus Pillagers. It's like they're in it's like there's an army of them out there or something. Sorry for the joke. Wingfall Hammer. Pretty damn decent. Uh, I've seen it do well in draft, but not so well in constructed. Um, I'll probably hold on to it. See if it's... Uh, Useful in later metas, maybe. This is a weird format. Oh, right, okay, it was weird upgrades. A third Magnus. Not a problem, there'll be plenty of people needing them. Ooh, a second Standard Bearer. Okay, that I'm more happy about. Diabolic Rev. Really nice card to have. Especially with Kana. This works so well with Kana. And now we have two of them. Second Homeville Advantage. Third Tyler Estate Center. So we're, we're looking good. And Rosalie Rejuvenator, yes. This card is brilliant to have in your green decks because green can, because of the sort of rampy nature of green, you kind of need to get to the later stages to really take off. And on turns 8 and 9, you've got Thunderhide Pack and then you've got uh, Emissary Quorum as well available and then Thunderhide Alpha, of course. So this can really just buy that extra turn for you. So it's really nice to have uh, Roseleaf Rejuvenator. And another Bristol Emblem. Next. Okay. Another Venomancer. I feel like we've done all of the common heroes now. I imagine there aren't many more out there for us to for us to find. I, I want to make sure I have enough sense to say to do all this, so I think that's three now. Spot the weaknesses, that's three now. Cool the reserves can be okay in draft. And there's a heroic resolve. So we do actually need three of each of these if we want to build that mono red deck, so maybe I'm not too annoyed about that. <laughs> Ooh, what are all of our items doing being upgraded? 
someone is looking for a bargain. Hey, it's our third Sven. I still need five more to be ahead of Crip. Remess Blessing, strong. Fight through the pain. Get initiative. This this card isn't used enough, I feel like. When people play Tide Hunter and they have Kraken Shell to gain initiative, you just feel so helpless. And red decks don't use enough to fight through the pain. Cloak of Endless Carnage. This nearly made my bottom five because this is probably the worst rare item. Maybe this Oristal Emblem. Just draw a card after an allied neighbor of the equipped hero dies. I mean, maybe use it with Karna to get some extra draw, but you don't need draw out of your items. That's just not what you want. You can buy a Potion of Knowledge for that. In fact, this so this would have to trigger two and a half times to be worth more than Potion of Knowledge. Just buying two of those. And it takes up a slot in your item deck. Green Nations collectively make up the Merchant Kingdom of Ogre Magi, which you get for free, but that is my first Ogre Magi, so not too worried about that. In the Revtel capital, each are equal. Salamander's favor, that's two, maybe three, if I missed one. Third lost in time. And a third curse of atrophy. Maybe I hold I just I don't see the value of these. Modify enemy heroes with minus two attack. But they have to be in this lane. So, I mean, maybe against Meepo? <laughs> Once Meepo gets OP, is Curse of Atrophy the answer? Oh, upgrade. Two legendaries. Two rares. Sorry. Necrophos again. I think we're definitely done with the common heroes now, right? So we're just going to get duplicates from now on. But that's okay. Uh, disciple. I want more Disciples, if at all possible. What do I need on my... So I need Pugna, Bolt of Damocles, Drow Ranger, Meepo, and Watchtower. Are all I'm missing. And they're all rares. So, we've got two chances here to get some of those. One of these is a Bolt. Is one of these a Watchtower? Let's find out. Cover of Night. Not good yet, but I think there's place for this somewhere. Just gotta find out where. And a third Glyph. Again, not terrible. Pretty decent in the uh, the lock deck. I've got some pretty uh, pretty archetypey decks here. Ogre again. Oh, fourth Thunderhide. So that'll be worth selling. Fifth Thunderhide. <laughs> I've got a Thunderhide pack in one pack. Second Aghanim Sanctum. It's nice to have two of those. Don't necessarily need three. And a Corrosive Mist. This was alongside um, Ravenous Mass is the second card that I suggested worth holding on to. Because it's such a great effect. Condemn all equipped items. This is ally and enemy. But if you get into like a, a gold generation meta, Corrosive Mist will just shut that down. So definitely hold on to your Corrosive Mists. Use it for now, sell it later. I love that little paw print on the back of those decks. Ooh, double rare. And their mere presence can so many Aglody Vandals now. I love that card though. So good. Perfect value. Relentless Pursuit. That's the other... So we had Storm Spirit before and I spoke about the combo with Storm Spirit and Solar Khan. So you have three Ball Lightnings to move Solar Khan into a lane where she can just whack a tower. Relentless Pursuit is your backup. So if you don't have a, a Ball Lightning to hand, you can use Relentless Pursuit instead. And, speak of the devil, there's our Ravenous Mass. So we've got two Ravenous Masses and one Corrosive Mist. I'm perfectly happy with that. Oh no, we have three now. An Escape Route nearly made it into my bottom five of rares. Active on a one-turn cooldown. Return an allied hero to the fountain. Why the heck would you want to do that? Yes, it will stop feeding five gold. Yes, you can move it somewhere else. Yes, it comes back next turn. But it's not blocking anything. It's not doing any damage. It's just not there. And you've got to give up initiative to do it. No thank you. But, Ravenous Mass, I'll take it. Oh, a not common hero. It's been a little while. But it's going to be an uncommon hero because we've got a rare here. Disciple, I feel like we don't have enough Disciples. So I'm glad to have that there. Second Roseleaf. Fifth Stonehall Elite? I don't know. I'm very happy to have multiple of these. And another Outward Devourer. Maybe someone's foolish enough to buy my spare. Shield of Aquila, not the greatest rare item, but it can be pretty decent. Something I want to see in the secret shop more than in my 
my actual deck. Another uncommon hero and a rare item. All right. Always looking for a way to use science to improve things. Even okay, we've definitely got enough disciples now and enough slaves, so we're happy on that front. Oh, and sniper. Also on my top list. Sniper, brilliant. This is your quintessential. What is it called? The turn? The the, the fifth? Well, I don't play enough poker to know those terminologies. The fifth hero that you play, because his hero ability comes off another turn after that. And he's so weak, but his ability does 4 damage to an enemy hero, right? Or, sorry, just an enemy of your choice. So it's absolutely great for clearing, and then his ability, his uh, signature card, Assassinate, 10 damage across lane for 7 mana. Sniper is just a great black hero. You want him in any hero-killing deck, basically. Which is typically some of the gold generation decks. And our item, Nick Dasher's Guard. So we've got one of each of the 25 gold items now. Which I am personally happy about, but Nick Tasha's guard is definitely the weakest of them. Onwards and upwards. Oh, potentially a rare hero. Probably just an uncommon one. <laughs> oh, we've got a whole army of trebuchets. And... Oh, it's a rare hero. Third Legion Standard Bearer, that's nice. Second Murder Plot, that's fantastic. But playing a Would you be easy. quiet, Jalixia? Wielding one of their swords is far more challenging. Okay, you're finished. I can continue with my rare hero, that is Drow Ranger. It's not, it's Lich, but it's a second Lich. Again, I can sell him. And he is very, very good. I feel like I've been graced pretty well with this. Like, I've got my time of triumph. I've got a pretty the decent deck going on. Is, is that an honor? Oh, Solar Khan again. Fantastic. She would definitely be worth something. There will be people looking for Solar Khan because she just... She enables an entire deck archetype. And our rare... Ooh, Smash the Defenses. So I kind of skipped through this. Klazarim Hourglass, good. Smash the Defenses, my third of, so I'm glad, happy to have that. And Cover of Night, again, like I said. It doesn't have its place yet, but there might be a meta that suits it somewhere. If you have, like, these sort of late-game mobile black decks... But they tend to use their mobility early at the moment. Hey, our sixth thunder hide pack. Oh, this is this is green. <laughs> Do we get dry ranger now? Is that what this is telling us? No, we get a viper instead. Uh, again, one of my favourite heroes, but probably doesn't sell for as high as some of the others. And whispers of madness. This again also made the or very nearly made our bottom five rares. Stun an enemy this round and stun allied heroes in all lanes this round. This is something you have to play in the right lane to even remotely consider using it. Uh, the only reason this isn't in my bottom 5 is because I already had one from the first 10 packs. My rares in the first 10 packs absolutely sucked. I'm so glad I decided to do this because otherwise I would be struggling to play Artifact. <laughs> so we've definitely got a... We've definitely got a rare hero. Hopefully acts doesn't take too long talking. Oh, I narrowly avoided clicking on that red miss more. So, gank. Uh, that's our third of, I believe, which is nice. Uh, where's our hero hiding? I'm going to click on this one first. Ooh, a second incarnation of Salamene. So our incarnation combo deck is looking even sweeter now. So we've got two incarnations, three stars aligns, and three Salamene's favours. So we... And that's what you want, really. You don't want three incarnations. So we've got all the pieces to fit the puzzle, and now we can just fill it with stuff to do with that unlimited mana. Meepo! Tick you off the bad list. So he's on the bad list for a reason, because he's absolutely shocking. However, he might be worth something. Meepo is a fan favourite hero of Dota, and a lot of people will see him as a challenge. And people love challenges. People are willing to put money down to complete some sort of challenge. So hold on to him for now. He might well be worth something. And if he isn't just yet... His ability is so different that in a future expansion there might be something that just snaps and makes him overpowered. So I'm definitely going to be holding on to my Meepo. I'm quite happy to have him. I enjoy a bit of memeing from time to time, but I'm not going to win with Meepo. I'm just going to be honest with that right now. This is our first common hero in a while. And it's Phantom Assassin. That's our third of. Hey, seven Thunderhide packs. We, uh, we can start a family. Like an entire Mafia family worth of Thunderhide packs. Alright, what's our rare? We, we still need Bolt. 
And we, if we if, if this is Watchtower, then our, we get Bingo on bad. I'm willing to avoid Bingo on bad, basically. Bitter enemies, okay. Relatively not used at all. Um, mainly because they're still... So after three turns, it deals six damage to both towers every turn. But the only decks you kind of want this sort of tower pressure in is super fast black decks. And in those decks, after three turns, you kind of have already got that tower down. So you'll be threatening the Ancient, which has 80 health. And it'll be doing 6 damage to a tower, which has 40 health. So the, the numbers just don't add up for this card. Not yet, anyway. We might see a, a meta in which this evolves into a decent card. Oh. Double res. Mazzy! I think it's, is that our first Mazzy? She's not in the base set, I don't think. I'm glad I got that then. I wouldn't have... Wouldn't have wanted to miss out on having Mazzy. Our newest addition to the Keen Folk. Rare. Rare. Unsupervised Artillery looks fun, but I don't really see it pay off that often. I actually lost to it once, but that was in draft. Our third Divine Purpose, that's perfectly fair. And another Raven Hook. This is a pretty decent... I'm just happy to have Mazzy now. Open. Ogre Magi again. So I think we've got four Ogre Magis now. Then really not going to sell for much, but like I said, I'm not too worried about that. In future, they might change something. I shall hold on to them for now. So this pack isn't looking super strong. Defensive stance, pick a fight, censure, of Avenus Blessing, and Iron Branch are all not great cards. Golden Ticket and Book of the Dead are pretty decent. Ogre's decent, but we've already got him. And Volmata, Messenger Rookery, and Diabolic Revelation. They're just like above average cards, but not fantastic. <coughs> so our rare's got to save us here. Rampaging Hellbear. Okay, that's our first one. Uh, these are, in my personal opinion, an excellent one of in your wide green decks. If you manage to take over a lane so much, the enemy just abandons it, and you draw into your Rampaging Hellbear, you can drop him in that lane, and for every single turn, he'll get plus four attack. And now we've got three Divine Purposes, so we can even make him damage immune. Uh, he can still get slayed, but the enemy would have to commit hero there. Basically, this guy ramps out of control, which is ramp, aging, hellbear. It's in the name. Come on. You saved the pack. Thank you, sir. The warrior priests of the Remuscu faithful are and the Magnus to sell off. And their mere presence can bolster the hearts of the virtues. I feel like I'm happy with all the commons. Like, I'm pretty sure we've got... With all of these packs, we'll have three of the commons, I'm pretty sure. Fourth standard bearer. Maybe someone wants to buy that. Time of Triumph. We have two of. You basically only want two of Time of Triumph. Three of means you've got three eight mana cost cards in your deck. So if you draw all three of them round one, maybe you don't use them. But now we have two Time of Triumphs. This is the quintessential number of Triumphs. Whew. Okay, we are going to stomp some people with some green-red decks, which I'm thoroughly pleased about, because green-red is probably my best. Oh no, red miss more. Quick, 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 quick. Okay, anything good. Smash is good, stars align, sell. Uh, sell a is... It's kind of okay. Curse of Atrophy, terrible. Next. Whew. That voice line. I like the idea, like, so if you're opening one pack, this is why, so I really liked the pack opening when I first looked at them, when I did the first 10, I'd always hover the hero, listen to the awesome cool voice lines, which I thoroughly encourage you to do, go look at those. So I'd listen to the voice lines, I'd very slowly go through all the cards, like the animations feel good, like opening the pack feels good, listening to the heroes gets you into like the lore and the, puts you in the perspective and stuff. But when you're opening a hundred of these guys, no. Ain't nobody got time to listen to voice lines anymore. Hey, Lycan. You get him with the g game, but Lycan's probably the best hero you get with the game. Not sure that will matter for anything. <laughs> Thunderstorm, great. I don't think we have three of yet. We haven't seen any Annihilations yet. That's kind of sad. Bingo! We did it. All of the bad ones. Ah, oh, bad bingo one. I feel bad. Sorry, guys. I let you down. But maybe, maybe we'll get a drow and that'll make everything better. I mean, we've got two time of triumphs. I couldn't be more pleased. 
Well, potential for a rare hero. Really careful when you <laughs> okay, that voice line is kind of funny. Or maybe I'm just... E made. It's easy to make me laugh. Okay, Legion Commander. I'm very happy with that. I'll take that. I would have taken a Drow as well, but... Rising Anger and Legion Commander. There's good synergy there. There's good synergy. What do we have here? It's not magical, oh, but it open is. plate mail accidentally. Oh, what's an intimidation doing there? I don't think I've seen this before. I guess it's because we've got two uncommon items. So does that mean our hero might be in that middle spot? Either way, one of them is Blink Dagger. Very happy with that. Okay, so rare hero. There is a chance we can bingo on Drow. We could also get Pugna, which would help me towards my want list. Drow Ranger! Okay, bingo again. And Valve, I freaking love you. Oh my god. Okay, so. This hero might be overrated. But. God damn, she's strong. Whew. Okay, we are doing very, very well for ourselves now. We might get a full house. We need Pokna and Bolt of Damocles, and we have completed my list. Four Svens. At this point, Sven is just a meme. And I love it. Oh, okay, so rare item. We could get a horn. We could get another vesture. Or another apotheosis blade. I'm very happy with that. I'm feeling lucky today, guys. God damn. Drow Ranger, two time of triumphs. I am ticking, like, unearth, unearth secrets. Mist of Avernus. Like, I am ticking off my list. Another relentless pursuit. Reluctantly. They agree. Another sniper, which is definitely uh, nice to have. So we need Bolt. Corrosive Mist. I'll take a second Corrosive Mist. Definitely. I'm, I'm looking forward to that sneaking through the meta and becoming something. I'm really... Uh, guys, I'm looking forward to this game. Like, honestly, this game is going to be good. Hell with the Dome. Like, that's a good a good item to have. Bristleback. That's my first Bristleback? How have we not had one of these guys yet? Is he in the base set? I don't think he is in the base set. Cool, I'm glad I unlocked one. Eight Thunder Hide Packs. Nice. Spot Weakness is strong. Bristleback. If I didn't have a Bristleback, I would have been buying one. And a third Apotheosis Blade. Come on. Whew. Okay, so I can probably sell one of these. Like, no one needs three Apotheosis Blades. Unless you're trying to collect, catch them all sort of thing. Another rare item. Soaring through the air is not just a liberation. Oh, Enchantress. I'm seeing uncommon hero I'm seeing common heroes that I haven't got yet. I thought we'd got through them all. Is that nine Thunderhides or ten? I hope we have ten Thunderhides, that'd be hilarious. Another Clazarine. Whew, this is uh this is going good guys. And a shop deed. Okay. I'm in it for the memes. Why not? Uh, I used this once. I bought something bad with it, like a Ristal emblem or something. <laughs> uh, sometimes it can be freaking fantastic. Most of the time, it's uh, not great. It's not magical, Ooh. but it is effective. Many updates. Third Rosie Prejuvenator. Definitely happy to pick one of those up. Third Homefield Advantage. Very happy to pick one of those up. Rare. Hero. Could we have... Another drow? Or an axe? Or maybe a third Karna? Or a third Lich, maybe? Whew, I'm opening the good heroes. I don't think I've had a bad rare hero yet. Well, other than Meepo. But even he will be worth something, because everyone freaking loves Meepo. Reptile Signet Ring. I, I want three of those, and I've got two now. And... Path of the Bold. This is only the second path we've had. How is that possible? Like, there are four of them, and three of them are terrible. And this is only our second one? I don't want to, like, make anyone salty, but I am so lucky. <laughs> for the warrior on a budget. Another hero escape. Okay. Maybe I spoke too soon. Maybe I've just said I'm so lucky and now I'm going to get, like, the worst hero. OD. 
Luna. We got a Luna now. Guys, we're going off. And a fourth glyph of confusion. Okay, so that's where it stops. But man, Luna. I'm so happy to have one of those as well. Because we've got a lot of good control cards. We haven't got an Annihilation yet. But we've got a lot of good stuff. We can, we've got two spare liches we can sell for an Annihilation. I'm happy with that. Oh, this is a long voice line as well. The stories of uh, that one, that one, that one. The wild blade. Now we've got have the uncommons. Of so many. You can't throw a Smeevil. Uh, oh no, it's a Rix. Why? I'll hold on. I'll hold on to my Rixes. Because I think, like, you're going to be able to abuse his passive one day. And a third Com flag. Nice. And a third Sanctum. So uh, my blue deck is looking strong. Oh. Ding. Another Blade of the Vigil. The stories of Sven, Gita the Wildblade, and Clement hmm. have captured the imagination of so Sensor, many. I think that's my fourth. You can't throw a rock so many hero capes now. A group of school kids like, how many adventures. capes can one hero really need? Let's be honest. You only need one Building cape. One of their swords is far more challenging. And a third incarnation of Salamene. You know, I might actually sell this third one. I don't need three. But still, really, really nice to have. That combo deck. It's it's awful fun if it works. Vanessa wanted to take it I haven't actually won with that yet. Oh, Beastmaster. He's also in my uh, common only deck. He might also be a starter hero. I can't quite remember. But I'm very happy to have him either way. I think that's our first Meevil Blacksmith. Fourth Rejuvenator. And Ultra of the Mad Moon. So, happy to have at least one of these. Happy to have more of these. The commons I basically unlocked all of now. And Remote Detonation. We got techies for the memes as well, guys. Sweet. Uh, this card might be good. So, this card is in a, a strange place. So, this card would be good in like against wide decks. If the enemy has got loads of units, this is this gets a good value, right? However, Annihilation also costs 6 mana. And as blue, you're not too worried about just sacrificing a hero. So, typically... You'd place a blue hero in the lane and remote destination and kill everything bar the thing in front of your hero. Or you put a blue hero into that lane and you annihilate. And it just kills everything. I think annihilate's probably better. So, uh, But it's it's a good alternative to annihilation. But annihilation just works in so many scenarios. Like if the enemy's got one unit that is really beefy and it's going to destroy you, you can still use annihilation and kill that. Annihilation is just... An excellent card. It's kind of a shame that I haven't got one yet. Do we get a th third Keenfolk Turret? No, Defend the Weak. Hey, watch Terror again. <laughs> uh, maybe my luck is running thin towards the end of these packs. Oh. Keenfolk Plate. Ah, not the worst. Hey, five Svens. Sweet. Another shield for our collection of shields. Thunderstorm. Nice. I think we now have four of those, so not too worried. Bolt of Damocles. Is that bingo? Oh, it's not quite bingo. We still need Pugna. How is Pugna the last card I need? I nearly didn't put Pugna on, but he's actually one of my favorite heroes to play in the game. He's just, he's just fun. But yeah, so Bolt of Damocles, pure style points. The enemy thinks, you know what? We're going to just let you get to mana 10 and just slowly work you away. But there's that one tower that's on 19 health. And they're not too worried about it. You drop a blue hero in that lane. You have initiative. You bolt a Damocles. It's got an epic animation. Like, it's just, like, one of the best ways to win a game. It just feels good. Unless it ha happens to you, in which case it feels bad. Which makes the person who owns the card feel even better. Another rare item. Happy to have more of these. I need a third one of Relentless Pursuit. For my uh, aggro deck. Sephiroth Shield. Not the best. But Relentless Pursuit is good. Oh. So it's a uncommon hero. We. I love doing that. That just feels fun. Flicking through those. Okay. What uncommon hero do I want? Uh, that's an in interesting question. I mean, another Legion wouldn't be terrible. Ooh, Tight Hunter. I don't actually have a Tight Hunter yet. 
I almost forgot he existed, but I spoke about Kraken Shell earlier. It's a really nice card to have. Tide Hunter works well in, in some control decks, especially. Um, if, for whatever reason, you don't want to run Legion and Axe, or Legion and Beastmaster. Or Okay, so there are a lot of good control red heroes, but Titans is definitely in that contention. And a Poaching Knife, which is nice for those gold round decks. So like I said, we have the Bounty Hunters for that. Not a not a bad deck. Not an expensive deck either. The rivalry between Akila oh, and another shield. <laughs> Plenty of shields. I'm going to do that every time now. Flick through those. Assassin's Veil is good. There's our third Relentless Pursuit. There's another Enough Magic. And Bitter Enemies. So we've got three of Relentless Pursuits now. We can definitely do our aggro deck. We still need a uh, Winter Wyvern for that, which would be nice. We. So that's a rare now. Nice. So we've got two rares. Annihilation! Yay! Okay, so we haven't missed out on having Annihilation then. And another Steam Cannon. So this is a really nice set. Phantom Assassin, Annihilation, and Steam Cannon. Man. One thing I wish this had is some sort of indicator as how many packs you've you've got left. The I have no idea. Oh, Lion. There's a new one. So, best. everyone thinks Lion's bad, and AJ says Lion is actually good. I'm, I'm in the bad camp. I think Lion's bad, but Mana Drain? Mana Drain's not as bad as people think. I just think that... So I think Mana Drain is good. But I think Lion with a huge cooldown for his ability and six being a 6-5, I just think he's not good enough. We definitely have more than 10 Thunder Hides now. Ooh, rare. Friendly Fire, rare, rare. Solar Spring, really nice green card. Definitely good for sustain and another Curse of Atrophy. But Solar Spring, that, that's great. Friendly Fire is nice, having a Lion. Yeah, I'd love to know how many packs I have left, because... I don't know, I just feel like when you get to the last pack, you kind of want to savor it. And I'm not going to be able to save on my last pack. For all I know, this is my last pack, and I'm just going to fly through it. Got steel strength, though. I don't think I have three of those yet, so that's nice. There's our Winter Wyvern. So our aggro deck is looking even stronger now. And another Wrath of Gold. So, just a nice pack there. I don't know whether you have to hover over that to uh, trigger it. Another not common hero. Is not a clever name. I feel like I've been lucky with these, but I'd love to see the uh, the numbers other people have been getting. Be Called reserves. So this is a rare hero, isn't it? Because we had Helm of the Dom in this spot. Which, again, I like Helm of the Dom. It's a good card. Good, good card. Okay. Rare hero. Who's it going to be? Do we get Pugna? Is it going to be a full house time? Is it going to be Axe? Possibly the best rare hero we don't have yet? It's Centaur Warrunner. Not terrible. Really nice in so the ag the uh, aggro deck, this uh, black red aggro deck with Storm Spirit, Winter Wyvern, and Solar Khan. Also uses red, and I like to run it with Centaur Warrunner because of double edge. So, uh, yeah, beefing up that deck. Also, pretty decent in the uh, mono red deck because double edge is a one mana card. Happy with that? I'm glad we've got Centaur. I want to get one of each of the heroes. That That's. Really, that would be really nice. So many Thunderhide packs. I can't believe this was on my list. Like, we've got so many of those. Beefy, beefy Thunderhide packs. There's a third Legion Commander. Not sad about that at all. And a fourth incarnation of Salamene. Okay, we are selling these. We are selling these babbles. They're going to get us some cash dollar. I'm also in the swing of things, so I don't want to back out and have a look at how many packs I have. I just want to keep that train going. Home for advantage, nice to have. I think maybe that's my fourth. I'm not sure. Pit Fighter, he's uh, he's not terrible. He works in some decks, but probably more of a, a draft card than a, a constructed card. But nice to have one of, just in case he suddenly becomes meta. Oh, update. So, rare, rare, potentially one of the, potentially that's a hero, but this is probably a hero. No, Temple of War, so. Another Pit Fighter, and then a rare hero. Storm Spirit. Good to sell. 
Storm Spirit definitely up there in, in probably... I, I don't know whether it's just up there in my favourite heroes or just up there in the favourite heroes. But a great card nonetheless. Uh, that it's one. Not magical, but it is effective. Hey, another Mazzy. Just in case someone uh, needs that Mazzy and feels left out of the memes. And another Cloak of Endless Carnage. This is maybe... So, okay, in one way this feels like one of the worst packs I've had, but at the same time, it only feels that bad because I've got most of these cards now, right? So I shouldn't feel too bad. If that was my last pack, though, that would, feel, that would be a feels bad man, for sure. Perfect for the warrior on a budget. Why is Stonehall Cloak up here? What does that mean? Normally it should be down there. I don't know. Thunderstorm's great, though. I can't have enough Legion Standard Bearers. And Path of the Wise, yay! Okay, so we nearly we only need one more. Which which, which is the last one we need? Dreamer, Dreamer is the last one we need, right? And Dreamer is the only good one. Thanks, Valve. <laughs> Perfect for the warrior on a budget. I feel like we've hovered a broadsword for the first uh, as the first item in the last like five packs. Steel strength, we've definitely got three of now, which is good. Say to Magician, I think that's three of, maybe four. Ogre Corpse Tosser, that's three of now. So our Kana Ogre Corpse Tosser deck is looking very strong. Kana Prelex Ogre Corpse Tosser, let's not forget. Moving on. Perfect for the warrior on Another freaking broadsword. Why is that always a broadsword? Is it weighted to go there or something? That's at least our third Revtel Signet Ring. So that's, uh, that's exactly what we want. And a third Steam Cannon. Okay, so our black decks are looking quite strong as well now. Our blue decks are looking strong. Our black decks are looking strong. Our green decks... Our green decks could probably use some work. And our red decks are looking overpowered. We don't have Axe. Oh, wait, I just said our green could do some work. We've got Dry Frickin' Ranger. Okay, we're, we're sorted. Like... There are very few things left that I'd actually need. Pugna is one of them. Bitter Enemies was not one of them. But no, I'm very happy with the collection we have now. This'll and hopefully this this collection that we have managed to get now is enough to help you guys out. Hopefully with all of these cards, we can provide some really good content for you guys to get learned in the game. Another sword can. Oh, that's a uh, that's a rare. I didn't know rares could go there. What the hell? Okay. Second Annihilation, fan freaking tastic fan dab -a and a second heroic, third heroic resolve, second, third, one of them, for our uh, mono red, mono red deck. Long ago, so yeah, Annihilation decks, ah oh, no, red miss more, gotta go fast, gotta go fast. And then Timbersaw, that's our first Timbersaw, I actually really like Timbersaw, uh, he's one of the heroes that I consistently try playing, he's not great. But he can definitely, he, he's a draft hero, unfortunately. But I will, I swear, I will try and make him work in Constructed. Third Raven Hook. Not bad. I'm very happy to have Timbersaw though. I would have uh, missed out on him. His, his voice lines are hilarious as well, as well. He is absolutely nuts. Yes, second miss of Avernus. Okay, this this is what our de our green deck is missing. Or is that our third miss of, that's our third miss of Avernus. So our green deck is missing, was missing, the third miss of Avernus, and it's still missing its second and thirds. I know the secrets. That were path the cunning. <laughs> it was worth a shot, right? But even so, I know the secrets isn't to essential to green decks, but if you have them, you definitely the play them. Ah, oh, oh, OD. Oops. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, I try and un open the hero that's like the last thing. Third murder plot, though. That's really nice. I really like murder plot. And another Corrosive Mist. Is that third Corrosive Mist? I think that is. So we're set for that now. For when the uh, Corrosive Mist meta comes around. You heard it here first, folks. Leather armor is cheaper, but you get what you pay for. Whee. Okay. Another... I feel like we've got so many Cloudstream Hourglasses. And this was also on my list. Like, I've got these to spare. If, I, if, I, if only I could equip all of them in one game. The enemy would be locked for like a billion turns every time they tried to unlock something. Or, or get a new card, rather. 
The Bronze Legion's hallmark is discipline. Yeah, second line. I feel like Lion is a rare, common lost. hero, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Double dirty deeds, that's not what you want to see. This guy in the back, he's actually a, a known guy. Uh, what's his name? I can't remember what his name is. He's important to the law. He's like in charge of the city or something. Or no, he's in charge of one of the one of the groups. Ah, uh, Simon and the other law people would kill me. Sorry, law nerds out there. Fifth incarnation of Salamena though. So uh, let's just move on from me not being able to remember law facts. Oh, so many upgrades. So that ding. So typically you'll have... I'm sure open it. Typically you'll have these four as commons. These four as commons. The three underneath these as rares. Uh, as uncommons rather. And then this final one rare. Underneath here. This one here. Oh, this one. So if you hear any of them ding, they've upgraded at least once. I think. Because I saw this one upgrade twice. Once. So, when you know they ding, you know that they, they've gone up a rank. <clears throat> but it's good that you're guaranteed three uncommons and one rare. Like, that's really good for... I mean, it's been so good for my collection. Like, I've got three of most of the uncommons I need. And there's a three of Mac Ravenous Mass. So I've got three of both of those cards that I set aside as uh, future meta-defining cards. Really so, potential rare hero. Put this thing on. What? No. Outward Varra. It's a shame we keep getting Outward Varras. Champion of the Ancient? Okay, so when we saw this card, this was one of the first cards the Play Artifact Twitter revealed, and everyone was like, that card is garbage. No one will ever play that. That is rubbish. But I've seen this be played a couple of times now, mostly in draft, but against a wide deck? Like, this guy gets plus one attack, plus one health, I think is the important thing, and plus one cleave for each enemy. So against a wide deck, this guy becomes a freaking, like, tanky dude that can just cleave through enemy after enemy. So it's effectively, like, spawning an extra hero. So, uh, yeah, he's actually really nice against certain decks and in certain methods. And that's it. Those are our 100 packs. I think we were incredibly, incredibly lucky. I've heard of some people having terrible luck. We got two timer triumphs. We got Dry Ranger. We got all of the bad rares we didn't want. <laughs> we got plenty of Mists of Avernuses. We've got like a bajillion Thunderhide packs. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this card opening. Sorry I wasn't anywhere near salty enough to uh, make you guys feel happy about me not getting good things. But we were actually really, really lucky. And I think Valve have actually made some incredibly good decisions. You saw sort of halfway through we stopped caring about commons. But actually, commons are what carry most of the decks. Outside of the heroes you need, which you can sell any of your spares for. So, I hope this... Uh, was enjoyable for you guys and if you did enjoy this content and if it was helpful then feel free to like and subscribe because it really does help the channel out. As always I've been Dovok of the Artificers Guild and I'll see you next time.